with our Tulane Green Wave. Let's get up and going. Check out, make sure we're up and live. Uh, get all our tweets and good stuff like that out. Make sure people know we're up and going. Because uh, tonight, we're getting round two of recruiting going on here. So, so you jump over into our chat. I got a red dot. It means we're up and going. Uh, I do know, you know it takes a while for people to get noticed and trickle in. So, all that being said, uh, you know, uh, I left off last time with uh, the end of last season, and we had a, a decent first season. It, it looked like it was going to be a lot better than it ended up. Uh, last 10 games or so, a little bit rough. We ended up going to the CBI, only won one game there uh, before we got bounced. So uh, I moved through uh, the coaching. We did have to replace our first assistant. I think we ended up with a little bit of an upgrade, to be honest. And then... <clears throat> All I've done was I simulated the off season, and you know, bought our reports. I bought the Southeastern report and the Great Plains report. So that'd be the red and the green, and then uh, set up our camp visits. And now here we are on June 26, which is the first day of recruiting. So before we get into that, show you some of the stuff on the inbox uh, because we're about to delete all these mails. But I wanted to. I did want to save them for you because we get, first of all, I told you guys the recruit ranking was going to be top 50. Uh, I was pretty close. We ended up 55th. So, in my opinion, that's because they're underrating at least one of our recruits. Uh, but also, you know, it's only a three-man class, so four-man classes are going to jump up. But we almost pulled a top 50 class in our first year. Not too shabby. Also, we got a player transfers. We didn't have any. So anybody that didn't graduate came back for another year, which is wonderful. Uh, here in the draft, you can see one of my boys from the Cardinals, uh, Quentin Hayes, the point guard, went first overall. Then we had, this is hilarious because Louisville, last year they were in the championship game. I think they lost it to, uh, I don't even remember at this point. But look at how many Louisville players are up here. There's their point guard, their shooting guard, their power forward. Uh, I think there's another one here shortly. I know they got one down in here somewhere they got another there's a another point card so they got decimated by um the draft by players either graduating or declaring early but uh we don't have to worry about that we're not coaching there right now so uh you saw our recruiting ranking you saw we didn't lose any of our other players so i also started off on the dashboard we can take a quick initial look at it where stetson the, the highly rated point guard came in with four stars. Uh, our other freshman, we have Jay Malone down here, only showing up as a star and a half. Same thing for Chris Ledoux. Ledoux? Probably Ledoux, right? You know, like Go Tigers, like a, one of those Louisiana things, Chris Ledoux. Uh, also, one and a half stars. I don't trust those ratings, though, especially with our scout. I think both of them will go up. I also think Stetson will probably come back down a little bit. Uh, I do kind of trust this rating on Carey, at least to some degree, because he was one of our better players last year. Let's just take a look through the rest of them. Lusick was a good player last year for sure. Lucius was a good player last year. So we've got a handful of guys that not only, you know, were good last year. What's up, Breeze? Breeze back in the chat. Uh, we got a handful of guys that were good last year that I think will still be good. And then we also have what I feel like is a pretty good first recruiting class. So, with all that being said, let's see what we've got as far as scholarships go so that we can try to get a feel for what players we're going to recruit. So, we have four available scholarships. All right, cool. And let's take a look at what we'll be losing this year with certainty, uh, assuming, you know, we don't lose transfers and that sort of thing. So... <clears throat> Losing a point guard, but we were kind of point guard heavy. We're actually losing two point guards. So next year, barring transfers or, you know, people declaring early for the draft, uh, next year we should still have two scholarship point guards. With Stetson being a freshman, unless he leaves, that position's in pretty good shape. Wow, we actually have three point guards that are leaving. But still, same logic applies. We'll still have two on the roster next year. That'll be all right. Thumbnails for YouTube videos. Uh... When I've done it in the past, I just used some video editing software. Uh, I used to have Lightworks. Uh, I've 
I tried to download a new free version of Lightworks when I got this computer and it wasn't exactly the same as it used to be. I do think it'll still get you some video editing software. So I would start off by you know, checking out some video editing software or something like that and then just get creative from there. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, uh, but that's the way that I did it. So shooting guard, we will still have two on the roster, Boyce and Anderson. I think, how did Boyce do last year? Got hair in my face. Boyce didn't do much of anything last year, so we could definitely use uh, a jump start there at the shooting guard position. I think Anderson was okay-ish, kind of. Yeah, so if you look, that would give us four guards, you know, two point guards, two shooting guards, four guards on scholarship next year. Uh, I'd love to add one more, whether it's a point guard or a shooting guard. I would like more help with the two. But, you know, those two positions can play it pretty interchangeably. We'll still have Lucic next year. McIntyre's a walk-on. So we definitely have a need at the, the small forward position. At least one guy there. Ladeau is our only scholarship power forward. So we definitely need some help there. But we do have four scholarship centers, and the only one leaving will be Lucius. So the next year we would have two seniors. So that would leave us, again, uh, assuming no transfers, it would leave us with Doe, Goodwin, and Malone, and Serpin. Serpin. One, two, three, four. So four inside guys. So we could really use like one inside player, one guard, and maybe a couple of small forwards, ideally. But, you know, nothing has to be set in stone here. Some of these positions can shift around, so... Let's jump in, and what we'll do, since we don't have, like, hardcore need at any position, is we'll kind of get all of them in there uh, fairly evenly. Uh, I would like to load up a little bit more on small forwards, but power forward can always play the three. i got a single player going right now where I've got a power forward that slides down, plays that small forward position, and he's one of the most effective players on the team, so... Not a big deal. Power forward can slide down. Shooting guard can slide up. Can go however you'd like. So let's see. This is our Louisiana recruits. And you know we don't really get any interest until we get way on down here. What I'm going to do is load up up here at the top. And you know previously I would have left off this, these very top five star guys. But with our increased prestige, with everything that's going, I feel completely comfortable throwing these guys on the list. If they'll make our, our SAT. So up here, you know, these threes, you know, I'm good with him, good with a 3-2, two. a 2-2, two, two, a 2-3, two, I'm going to let those sit. Two four, I think I'll also let that sit. And then we get down into these two-star guys. I'm really hoping to avoid two-star guys. So that did not add all that much at all to, to our lists. So what I'm going to do is... We're going to go position by position. Let's see, call and watch list. We don't have any point guards on our list yet. So, since I've added the Southeast as well as Great Plains, I'm going to go here over to those regions. And we are going to go out to the full recruit list. And we're going to try to get us 10 point guards added to a list that we feel comfortable that will qualify. And, and we're going to go all out and see what we can do. Fanning would be an amazing get. He's in Mississippi. That's not that far away. So maybe we'll add like like six from the southeast and four from Great Plains or some kind of mix like that. We'll see as far as guys we're comfortable adding. So only really one guy there at a five star. I don't feel comfortable with the four star. We can add a handful down here. So it's two, three. All right, so there's five guys, that, five point guards that we've added from the southeast. Let's jump over and add a couple uh, from the Great Plains as well. 2-5. Probably do not have a shot at him and he's going to be borderline anyway, so we'll move on from that. Alright, that'll be good for now. And then we'll move on and do the same thing as shooting guard. I am going to lay off of like top 10 guys, not in state, not in region. That's kind of crazy. I'll go a little bit harder with the guys in the southeast than I'm going to go with the guys in the Great Plains. So, uh, with that being said, four stars, yeah, I'll, I'll go for them. 
<laughs> the 1.9 GPA is not going to make it, boys. Uh, I can promise you that. That's not going to work out. So let's see what we've got here in the southeast. Woo. John Bailey. I'll give it a go. You know, sooner or later we're going to pull in one of those guys. So let's see how it works out, right? He's already on the list. Well, we got a lot of four-star uh, two guards here in the southeast this year. Uh, let's make sure to throw in these Florida guys since we do have that pipeline into Florida. I need to make sure to remember. I want to get... I want to prioritize Louisiana and Florida as I'm creating these lists. So I'll remember that as I get the small forward, and then I'll bounce back to Great Plains, and then I'll immediately forget again. <laughs> That's how I roll. So we don't really have a whole lot of those states here. Florida and Georgia, or Florida and Louisiana, rather. Seriously, nothing highly ranked out of either state, all the way down here. And he's a 1.9. All right, can't do it here. I think we need to get our pipeline going into Kentucky. What do you say? And I like those points per game out of a small four. That looks nice. We'll try that out. You know, this is all a little bit of experimental. We'll see how it goes. Whew. Some very highly ranked five star small forwards over here let's see what we got in the way of four stars just because i don't know if i'm wasting time like going out of region this early we got three of them there all right let's add them in anyway what the heck and again i'm trying to get about 10 of each of these so about you know five and five or however that breaks down A lot of good-looking power forwards over here. All right, so back to the southeast. Hey, man. Hunter says he uh, enjoyed watching the YouTube videos and the uh, Twitch archives. Uh, I really appreciate that, man. It's always fun to bring these games out. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this game before or not, but we're just trying to spread the word. Uh, it's a really awesome game. we got a great online league going if you're interested in this kind of thing. Come check it out sometime. Jump up on the uh, GM Games Discord and, and check us out. We can get you hooked up with some teams. Or you can just follow along with us and see uh, see who ends up winning. Spoiler alert, definitely going to be me. God, Weiss. From Louisiana, only a 2-2 and no interest. Oh, that hurts. I wonder if we got anything from Florida. Another Louisiana down here. We'll throw that on. New to Draft Day Sports Games, that's awesome. Uh, I'm always happy to, to bring their games out because they make some great ones. Uh, you should definitely, I don't know if you're a football fan or not, but uh, if you're unaware, uh, the creators of Draft Day Sports, they should be going live on their own Twitch uh, in about an hour with a preview of their next football game. So if you're a football fan and you like Draft Day Sports and you're new to it, jump over there and, and hear it from the devs you know, straight from the guys that are making it uh, it's a really cool thing they do it, it's relatively uh it's not like there's thousands of people in there if you've got questions and want to interact you can ask a question or make a suggestion or, and they take all that very seriously so um always like to spread the word on these games and and now they're out there doing the same thing themselves so check that out yeah i'm excited for their college football to come out this fall i'll definitely be streaming some of that as well all right i'm not seeing you know we've got this guy in louisiana he's only a 2-2 Come down here. We've already added Craig to the list like three times now. This guy's a 2-2 and a Juco. So let's just start from the top. Or what? We started from the bottom. Now we're here. Is that how it goes? Skip the 2-2. And we'll go ahead and throw in an extra one. Being in the southeast and, uh, you know, he's going to make GPA. He's got the four stars. So all that's good stuff. Let's see what the Great Plains has to offer. They got one five-star guy. Oh, did I start? I started with power forwards over here. My bad. All right, so that should be... I actually think we have 41 on our list right now, so we may only get nine centers. I think I added an extra power forward. Uh, if you're unaware, you get a 50-player call and watch list, so that's the limit on here. You can remove guys from the list and then uh, you know, add more back to it if you'd like. But as far as centers go, the Great Plains is looking a little bit... Slim. 
a little bit slim here. I always like to see a double-double out of a center, but he's not scoring at all. So maybe we stick up here with a handful of those guys. But, you know, every year different regions are going to be, you know, stronger or weaker with the different positions and that sort of thing. Uh, here is the five-star out of Louisiana. And this, if we pull a five-star this year, this is our very, very best opportunity. The in-state guy. He's going to make the GPA, all that good stuff. So we can go ahead. Now, since I can't remember exactly how many on our list, and I'm there we go, we're full. When it gives you that screen, your list is full. So, oh, you know the reason I didn't know exactly how many were on my list is because I added that handful from Louisiana ahead of time. So that threw my count off a little bit. We probably have a little bit extra on other positions, and we're going to end up being a little bit light here at center. Uh, so we will keep an eye on that. We've got two four-star guys here in LaFlem and, and Andrews. Well, LaFlem probably, well, he'll be borderline. I don't feel comfortable adding him. Elon Andrews, if he plays well at camps, is certainly somebody that I would look into, you know, drop somebody off my list and, and try to add him to it. But we got our initial list set. We're going to swap it over to our call and watch list. Then we're going to change to all regions and all positions. And I'm going to just start from the top. And start bringing these guys in if they'll come now some of them aren't going to especially outside of the region and you know um, all right so we did get Bennett in our last save we weren't even getting like three and two star guys from within the southeast region to actually visit but we did put them on the call list we did scout them live and then you know we called them and talked to them our assistant rather they were on the call list so the assistant calls every week and talks to them generate some interest and then we just went in and visited them when we hit that contact period and we landed some of them. So I'm actually kind of shocked to see Bennett coming in. But, you know, whatever works, right? Let's go down this list and we'll try to host each of them until we get somebody else to go for it. There we go. Eric Blake's going to come in. So we got a couple of guys from that Great Plains uh, region to, to come in and visit with us. Which is definitely, like I said, it's a little bit surprising. But it's also a good thing. You know, those are those are good surprises. Now, you can see here, we've got an entire list of 50 guys. And not a single one of them has any interest in us day one. Let's not be concerned with that. Let's let this get, you know, let's get through a month of this, give or take. And, and sort of reassess that. If we've got to back off of this sort of aggressive recruiting strategy, we can always, we can always change... Uh, midstream and go after lower rated recruits because there's not as many people going after them if you miss out on the highly rated recruits you're probably not getting back into the game so look at that we've already generated some interest here in Fagin and that wasn't even with a visit look the guys that visited still don't have any interest so you know they're all going to tell us it wasn't worthwhile I would imagine in these emails but McFadgen, we got him just with so not worthwhile, not worthwhile. We got him just with the assistant coach giving him a call. And so now he's got a little bit of interest. Whether it sticks or not, who knows. Let's check this out. I do want to see how these camps go. There's Brendan Frazier. <laughs> he was great. What was he? I can't remember what he was in right off. There's <laughs> Is that A.I. Iverson? Al Iverson? Uh, it's too close. I'd love to grab him, but definitely not in one of our areas. So here, here's the list. I went to East Coast Jams this year. I thought you know, we're definitely not to that elite category yet, but we could give this a shot. So here's our guys from that camp, and we can see how they did. I would go through, normally, if I thought I had a shot at all these guys, I'd go through here, see which ones I was really, really interested in, who played well at camp, and you know, go more aggressively towards them. In this case, it's going to be a little bit more about who we can actually generate interest in. So I'll go ahead and run the other camp, and then we'll pop over and take another look at our list. And we'll probably... Seeing as how these guys actually agreed to visit, but then didn't really find it interesting, I'm going to go ahead and pull them off of our list and open up some space. 
because I know we do have at least one center, and a lot of these guys up this high are kind of long shots anyway, especially outside the region. Well, let's see if he'll come in now. No, he still doesn't want to come in, but he'll at least talk to us. How long he'll talk to us is another story. <laughs> he gave us a little bit of info, you know. You take what you can get. I need a. Let's check a. Uh, let's check how our coach's recruiting ability is looking. So we're up to a 56. We're definitely getting there. Definitely getting there. More than halfway. Well, I don't know. We started at like 30, I guess. So maybe not more than halfway to 100 from 30. But we're above 50. That's all that counts. We'll call that the halfway point uh, to make me feel better about myself. How about that? Uh, what we're going to do is start let's see i see look, there's another one that we got just off of phone calls you can see we got three guys that went from nothing to cool just off of the phone calls so let's see i think we should start right in here and guys if you don't know your recruiting hotkeys on this game figure them out that's how you remove people from the list that's how i'm just clicking through here and hitting h on each one of these and that'll offer an in-home visit to them There we go, Richie Cross is going to come in. So we couldn't get Nigel Stewart, who's from our pipeline state, but we got Richie Cross. Uh, the pipeline states definitely help, but you know, we got 32 prestige, 31 prestige actually. It's obviously everything's a bit of a work in progress here. Let's make phone calls to these other guys, see if we can unlock anything else. Because anybody that's willing to talk to us right now, I mean, we've got the time and we've only got a handful of guys that will even answer our call all right cool so oh and do we yeah we got people to scout live so I'm just gonna go in and scout live anybody that has a little bit of interest uh, and just hope that it generates a little bit more because all of these guys should be uh, especially the the four and five star guys there should be improvements for a, a school like Tulane and we will come in, get some film on them as well. And again, this is just hotkeys, guys. F to watch film. It's, it's got the F in parentheses here. L for Scout Live, H for host recruit, B for visits, R to remove. So we got everything scheduled. Let's go there. Look at that. <clears throat> Calvin Harris goes all the way up to warm. That's uh, a good look. That's a real good look. He appreciated it. Calvin Harris said it was a good visit. So Cross and Harris both liked it. And Holmes liked it. So nobody said it was a, a complete waste of their time or anything. Ooh. Houston Classic. <clears throat> oh, the Houston Classic thrown today. I was going to say, where in the world are the recruits that we had in it? All right, so here's our recruits, and, and we've got you know a handful again. And again, this is a thing I'd go through one by one on them if I thought I had a chance at them, uh, just to sort of see who I liked. Is it? Oh, center BB Higgins. You can't have. I was like, his name's CBB. That center BB Higgins, BB Higgins rather. Too many B's and G's, and oh, this guy was the MVP of the Houston Classic. We got Eddie Eisenhower, Brian Harris, another B. We got two guys named BB in the top five of this camp. And then Jimmy Boyce. Let's see where any of them. We got, any, we got BB Higgins is one of our guys on here. It wouldn't surprise me if we had a Richie Cross. I think he's up there. All right, so a couple of the guys that we had listed did pretty well in Houston. Uh, now we'll go ahead and run the Chicago camp as well before we bounce back over to recruiting. So let's see how Chicago went. Calvin McIntyre. Oh, we weren't in Chicago. We're in the southeast. Sorry, I lost it there for a second. Had it, then I lost it. Let's go recruit. <clears throat> so this is probably about where we left off. So let's go back to offering these guys campus, campus visits. We're getting a lot of them. Like, I'm telling you, I've gotten more of these four-star guys to come in so far than I did threes and twos out of Florida last year. You can go back and check. The video's still up. 
Now a lot of them are starting to decline. So maybe we just had a little bit of beginner's luck. Maybe. But you know what? That's all right. We got Sean Craig. He'll come in. You know, we did this last year where I thought it was going to be an absolutely wretched recruiting season and nobody wanted to make to come visit us and it turned out just fine look now john bailey's even turned cool on us so we can go in and visit him Let's see where is all positions call and watch list hold on and we have a five-star center from louisiana see one of them that didn't have a good visit and i took off the list I think he is. And I think he's so highly rated. Let's check it out real quick. We might add him back. If I took him off the list, that was stupid. It was just me being, just going too quick and not realizing he was, yeah, we still want you on the list, bud. <clears throat> One of our two in-state guys that we're actually going after. All right, so we can at least let the assistant call him up. So as far as scouting live, I'm always just trying to generate a little bit more interest. We might as well start at the top, right? Let's get film on guys that we don't have any kind of rating on yet. And then we'll make a couple of phone calls here and see if we can't unlock a few more categories on some of these some of these top guys. All right, so Bailey, we haven't called yet. Let's give him a call. See if we can't unlock some of this because with so many of them not coming in for campus visits the obviously the best way to generate interest is going to be that in-home visit and we landed a ton of them last time doing that so now this time is obviously a bit different because we're going after a different caliber of recruit and i should probably cut bait with anybody that has team prestige too awfully high because we do not have that. We can't really compete on it. But, okay, so we don't have it unlocked on him. See, he's got playing time way up there. So this is a guy that really wants to play. I guarantee he would play at our school. So we need to unlock school prestige and conference prestige. We can compete sort of on conference prestige and facilities. Maybe not with the Blue Bloods. And, you know, they may be going after him, but you never know. They may not be. We'll see what happens. I think we ran through most of our phone time there, so let's get that again. And I, I don't especially think we're going to clean up up here. What I'm hoping to do is clean up sort of in this area. You know, hopefully we've got some guys in this area and even down in here that are doing well in camps that have a little bit of interest, and, and we can unlock some of that and really... Those are probably our primary targets, but here is Higgins. He was the center who, he was the MVP, right? So let's give him a call and a couple things. Oh, we can always throw out, you know, throw out some flyers and see if we can't grab one of these guys, or at least just generate a little bit of interest with an in-home. Uh, doesn't have to be any guarantee of success. We can go for it because, you know, what's our, the other option is to go after lower tier guys and they're not going to commit early anyway so we can swing for the fences here early without a huge risk it is a risk but i don't think it's a, a huge risk and i think it's worth it especially seeing what we pulled in last year and what we can do here i think it's worth it i thought that was holmes Let's see if we can get something out of some of these guys Gervin, you want to talk to us? I don't have anything to say. Frustrates me when I get hung up on too much. I'm just going to skip this. <laughs> it's a dead period anyway. Let's try to get some of the guys to come visit next week. So you can remember there wasn't a single person on our list that had any interest. Now we've got a handful that are warm. Well, two, three of them are up to warm, and a whole lot of them are cool. So this has worked out all right with our assistant calling these guys all right so we got three more to visit we're already doing as far as visits go we're already doing much better than we did last year for certain
and where do we want to start unlocking? Actually, we got summer camps. Uh, I'd like to see that southeast camp. And then once we go to the southeast camp, we'll really try to start honing in on a handful of guys that we want to make these offers to. See, most of them, they're coming in for these visits and they have a good time because we do have good facilities. We've got good recruiting coaches. So Matt Fanning, who I believe we are going after, was the MVP. So I want all of these guys on our list if I can do it. Marquette Holmes, that shooting guard I know, is on our list. I just called him. Let's go check out Fanning and Stewart. And if they're on the list, we definitely want to try to unlock some of that. There's Fanning. So he has got a little bit of interest. Can we get anything else out of him? Conference prestige. All right. And then Nigel Stewart was the other shooting guard. Marquette Holmes was the one that I said just hung up on us. I knew he was on the list. All right. We at least got confidence prestige unlocked, and that was an important one for him. So uh, we could theoretically compete there. Nigel Stewart was the other. So he doesn't have any interest. He won't talk to us on the phone. He is out of Florida, which is a pipeline state, but we don't have any visits or anything for him right now. So... Let me take a look real quick. Who are those other top five guys? We got Greg London, Jeremy Zimmerman. Let's take a look at those centers. Greg London has no interest. He's not going to talk to us right now. I could try that. Like, give me five minutes of your time, but I hate begging. Can't stand it. Zimmerman is not on our list which suggests to me that either he, one of two things, either he's got a terrible GPA and I'm too nervous to recruit him, or he's like one of these lower three-star guys and he needs to be our top target. Oh, shoot, I should have limited that, limited that to centers. I see him already. He's got a 3-1. How's he not on the list? Is he one of those two I said we need to come back and add later? That he is. Alright, so Zimmerman is definitely on the list. Quick like. Can we add Elon Andrews? Yes. Uh, LaFlam, no, not those guys. So we can make a run at Zimmerman. We can let the assistant call him a couple of times. Let's go ahead and advance one more time. Get us into August. Then we can zip right through this and, and hit our contact period, which is really when we're gonna see how this whole thing's going to go. And again, it, it's not the end of the world if we strike out during this period but we do have four scholarships i'd love to bring in one or two highly rated guys uh, if we don't though we can always fall back on it we've got a good base of talent with uh, the recruiting class that i just brought in so i'm not going to get overly concerned way too early we already tried to bring in these guys oh that was that just ran another southern uh another summer camp didn't actually do the recruiting. Let's get the recruiting done. So now we got our visits back again. Anybody up here? Look at that. John Bailey changed his mind. He wants to come in. Anybody else changing their mind? No, not you. No. Hey, Matt Fanning changed his mind. Out of Mississippi. This right here would be a great pickup. Man, I hope he has a good visit. Oh, and Elon Andrews, another one that we just added, right? Okay. So Zimmerman did not go for it, but Andrews did. Cool by me. Let's go in. Let's see. Allison still has no interest in state. Fanning has some, see look, the school prestige hurts us, but playing time and conference prestige definitely have to be in our favor. Let's see how the rest of this looks, if we can get him to talk. He likes location, and we're close. 
so he is considering facilities and academics. You want to talk about your parents at all, man? Interest? No, he doesn't want to talk about anything else. But we got him completely unlocked, at least as far as pitch location, uh, pitch areas go. So, you can take a look at what he's actually interested in. Playing time and location are both definitely going to work into our favor. Conference, prestige, facilities, we can compete in those. School prestige is going to hurt us. So, uh, but we still have a chance at him. He was in the top five at the East Coast Jam. That's great. He was MVP of the Memphis Hoop Summit. So, I definitely think you know, we've got our first offer right there. If we landed him, that would be crazy. So, that's the one guard that we're going to offer early. Remember we talked about uh, maybe a one guard, one big guy, and a couple of small forwards or wing players. So there's our point guard. Uh, Marquette Holmes is actually up to warm on his interest. He was top five at Memphis. So uh, immediately after saying that, going to break that and go ahead and offer Holmes. He played well. He's got interest. So we're going to go for that as well and try to unlock some more here. And again, this can be one of those guys that slides over into a three if we need him to. He doesn't want to unlock anything else. Every week we need to come back and, and call Holmes until he gives it up on the pitch areas. All right. So how did everyone else do? Garvin did not play well. We know Zimmerman was good, but he doesn't have interest right now. Calvin Harris, I don't want to go crazy with the guards. Watch, he probably played well, didn't he? Top 10. And we're fifth on his list. He's from Louisiana. All right. Hold on. How did he do? Top 10 at Memphis. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're at least going to call him and unlock some stuff. Maybe this should be... Come on. All right, you give me that. And program facilities. So Calvin Harris, given that he actually has some interest, may actually need to be another one of our very top targets. If we pulled in, we're already going to have a ton of guards. Yikes. Let me think about that. He's in state is the big thing there. Let's look at some of these inside players before I go without getting any of them at all. Richie Cross did not do well at the camp. Let's actually just look at our forward. Oh, power forwards and centers. I do like those little drop downs over there where you can like combine the positions or whatever. Allison still just will not talk to us. Higgins kind of cool. You know, we don't have any recruiting actions we can do left, left this week anyway. Let's just go ahead, uh, see how that plays out, get our call time back, and see if our assistant coach can talk a little bit of sense into anybody else, get somebody to come in here. Maybe Zimmerman will want to open up a little bit, or Higgins you know, gets interested in actually, is he coming in for a visit? Let's see. Let's see who actually comes in for visits here. Pop over to the inbox first. So Branch appreciated it. You know, a lot of them, when they're coming in, uh, so Fanning didn't like it. So that's a big disappointment. Let's see if he, if he dropped down to none. Which he did. We're going to pull that offer. And move it down here to Calvin Harris. Just be a little bit more balanced on our, or actually just to get him the offer, honestly. All right, we've got evals on everybody. So now we can just run through, see if we can grab some people to come in for visits real quick. Got one there. Still only got the one. Got another, Colin Bratton, out of Mississippi. And there we go. 
Brandon Malone wants to come in and check us out. So we're still getting three visits a week, and that is definitely not something we could say in the last save. So Fanning, we pulled his offer. Mark at Holmes, we need to unlock some pitch areas. Tell us what you want to hear about, buddy. <laughs> not academics, that's for sure. Coach discipline, not so much. Maybe, maybe we'll play in time. Maybe we'll play, but definitely playing close to home. Love to hear it, my man. He's even going to talk about his parents. Oh, tell me your interest. Ah, wouldn't give up the last one. That's all right. We got a lot unlocked with Holmes. That's cool. So let's see what he actually looks like. Out of Tennessee, he's really into location. Also, playing time conference prestige facilities, and then school prestige is down lower. So I think we got a. We've got a shot with him. I don't want to say it's a great shot, but we have a shot. Take a look at Harris here. We've already unlocked all of his. Tulane is up there on his list. That's two of our offers. So we've got a we've got a, a minute here before we've got to get those other two offers out. Let's take a look. Maybe go ahead and get him out now. See, he's got some interest. How did he do? He was all right at Memphis. Mm. All right, so that's a maybe. That's a maybe for sure. Let's see, we said Gervin was poor at camp, right? Did not stand out. Cortez Killian. Tremendous work ethic. Always good to see. And he was decent at Memphis. So another solid maybe. Dion Hester. Top 25 at Houston. That's pretty good. I would hope to get somebody in the southeast, if possible, like P.J. Crooks. Really likes location and academics. So, you know, we've got decent academics. We could maybe go there. Crooks is our biggest maybe so far. Price didn't stand out. He was top 25, Corey Austin. But he has no interest. And then Sean Larry... Who was also top 25. And he does have a little bit of interest. So I think Crooks here is our first go to. Did we already unlock everything on him? Tell me about your parents, man. Not in the mix. Not in the mix with Crooks. That's all right. Who was our other definite maybe? Larry? Top 25 in Memphis and some interest. Let's call him up. See if we can unlock anything at all. Anything's better than nothing. Team Prestige doesn't like it. Does not like it, rather. Uh, Conference Prestige, not totally into that. So, let's come back to him next time. Sean Larry. Got two first names going there. Uh, we've already got our visits out for this week, so skip on ahead and jump right back on this guy. See if we can unlock some other stuff. Would actually put two of our top targets. Oh, come on, two of our top targets in the state of Tennessee. So it's kind of interesting. Oh man, oh man. Top twenty-five. Top twenty-five. Whoa. Sorry, I minimized my game screen there for a second. All right, let's go back over and take a look on the inside again because we do need to get an offer out over here as well. But B.B. Higgins is all the way up to warm. Are we on his list or anything? I wonder. Let's just take a scroll here. So uh, it doesn't necessarily go in order. We're starting off with Brian McIntyre. We're just going to scroll through here and look right here at these top 10 schools. See if anybody, anybody has any interest from McIntyre. Or not if they have any interest. You know, we've got a lot that are either cool or warm. I want to see if I'm in anybody's top ten as of right this second. And a lot of these, like, I guess we could be in the top ten, but we haven't asked them yet. All right. But nobody is it actually showing up yet. All right. So our best look so far, our top player that has warm interest is actually Higgins. All right. So he's definitively telling us we're not in the mix. He's into prestige. 
not conference prestige. He likes being close to home. Come on. Come on. Give us a little bit more program facilities. Academics. No. I think that's a decent... Um, what am I trying to say here? You know, the school prestige being down here is definitely decent for us. Location and coach discipline. Those are things that we can compete on. And we're relatively close here. Uh, conference prestige being low isn't great. Uh, you wonder if academics or facilities are going to be really high, but you know, we can give him a shot for sure. So why don't we just go ahead and get the offer out, right? Bounce back over to small forwards. Who is... Marshall did not play well. I think we said Crooks was sort of what we were leaning toward. Did Doctor not do well? He was decent at Houston. He's much higher rated. Much better statistically speaking. Almost across the board. What's he interested in? Do we have a phone call? Time? A little bit. Let's see if we can get some of this guy unlocked. Alright, so he also really likes location. So we'll take a look here. Next week we will get somebody. Oh, look, he'll actually come in for a visit now. And so will Price, and so will Sean Larry. Oh, Sean Larry. Alright. So we, we got three visits out of the small ones there. Very interesting. Alright, so Doctor's no longer interested. He did not have a good time. So let's get him out of here. As far as the rest of these guys go, Killian, he was decent. I know Gervin was bad. Marshall, no. Hester, I think, was another no. Oh, no, he was top 25 in Houston. So he's actually in the top 100. He's got by far the best points per game out of these guys. Rebounding isn't at the very top. These evals over here I'll completely disregard. I really don't, don't care for those at all. I don't think there's a huge difference between Hester and Crooks. The one big thing that I see is GPA. Uh, him being 2.5 is probably okay, but I don't trust it. So I think we're going to go ahead and offer our scholarship here to Crooks. And we're actually, good timing, because we've just moved into Crooks Top 10. So that's cool. We've got all our scholarships out. Let's go through, see if anybody else wants to make a visit now that they've had some time to think about it. Manual Herd coming in. London. Zimmerman. No. No takers. No takers. Ah, there we go. Colin and McCain. So we got all of our visits out once again. Let's move ahead. I'm feeling good about landing at least one of these, you guys. I think we can make we can we can make it happen. Uh, he doesn't want to visit. Uh, I think I, I asked just about everybody to come in that week. So let's move this back over. We're in all regions, just our call and watch list. Before I take off a filter, I always like to check and make sure I'm not going to like all regions, full recruit list, all everything, because sometimes that can take uh, a minute or two to load up. So we're going to go through the guys that we've actually already offered and just try to unlock the last pitch areas, if there are a handful of them. And then I'm not going to waste too much more time with phone calls. We're going to jump straight in and get to those in-home visits. We've unlocked everything on him. I should have checked first. With Calvin Harris. We're number eight on his list. Looking good there. And PJ Crooks still doesn't want to come in. But we've got him totally unlocked. So we can see if any of these guys up here change their mind, want to come see us. Yeah. Here and there. Not a whole lot. Where it gets exciting. Where it will probably, like, is, I'd say it's 50-50, we get none of them. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's a decent chance that we can land one of these guys, and any of them should be extremely solid players for a school like Tulane. Most of these guys would be solid players at any school in the country. So the fact that, you know, we got 
We got four scholarship offers out. Where's our three out of the four are warm on us. Crooks is the only one that's really at cool. And I, I don't know what the reason is. I don't know if it's the offenses I run or what. I can never land a small forward. So I have the worst luck of this on my single player saves, on all of my multiplayer saves. I don't know if I've ever landed a really talented small forward that I was super excited about. I always end up playing shooting guards and power forwards there. So I don't know why. That's just how it ends up working out. So we're on September 4th. We've got all of our offers out. One last ditch effort to unlock pitch areas on our on our offers. I know we don't have Higgins all the way unlocked. And he won't give us any more information. Come on back to me. Let's get all our positions. Higgins we can't get. Holmes we've got. I'm pretty sure we've got it on them. All right. Off to the moment of truth. Now here is where it gets a little bit tricky because we can actually lose players right here, which would be so unfortunate. And you can see there Drew Allison, the, that five-star center from Louisiana, actually committed to Georgetown without taking any in-home visits from any other school. But none of our targets did that. They're all still up and available. So we can actually call and try to unlock pitch areas one more time with Higgins. Okay, so he actually gave it to us that time. All right, we're not in a mix with him. We're not in his top 10, but we can still go and visit and see if we can't change that. And last time there were guys, I was not in their top 10. I made visits. I changed their mind. Location would definitely be big. His parents were really into playing time, which he's also into. And, I mean, he would definitely get a ton of playing time at our school. He is more interested in location. His parents, like, it's not telling us how much parental control is going to come into the equation. So what I'm actually going to pitch him, location or discipline? How do, I, how do I have my coach set up? If he's a very high, we go discipline. If it's just high, very high discipline. That's where we're going. See if we can't bring in that five-star man. What's up? We love the discipline players. Come play for us. Marquette Holmes. Digging the location and also playing time, conference prestige, and facilities. So we are in his region. Let's give him the location. With Harris, he's actually in state. He likes location. That's what we're rolling with. And then down to PJ Crooks. Oops. I need to check that one just to see if he'd come. He still doesn't want to come in. He really wants to hear about academics and location. So you know, we've got decent academics. We can talk about that. We're no, uh, we're no, you know, Duke or anything, but uh, we can talk about academics for a minute without being like embarrassed about it. So let's see if any of those in-home visits changes any minds, changes uh, any hearts, gets us a commitment, please. Let's go. Who's coming up to lane? We'll get decisions here. I just don't know if they'll be good or bad. Oh, we only got one decision, and it's out of Higgins. So he says he liked the visit, but we weren't in his top 10, so that's not boding well when a top 25 player commits immediately. P.J. Crooks didn't like us. Calvin Harris did. Marquette Holmes was all right. And then Higgins. What? Higgins, we go from not in the top 10. He's coming. Look at this. He's, he's not even in our region. He's not in our state. What? That's crazy. That's ridiculous. How did that happen? Look at this. The third best center in the country. Oh, Chris is going to be pissed he wasn't watching when that happened. Look at this. B.B. Higgins. Guys. <laughs> That's amazing. He's the MVP of the Houston Classic. I believe he... Did he do well... At Indy, I can't remember. But what a pickup. The only one that we'd offered who actually committed. And he commits to Tulane. Now, the problem that we do have is we made it in home to Crooks. 
he didn't bite. So let's, it, now he's still cool over here, so it's not the end of the road, but let's see what's going on with the rest of these guys, because several of them have gone from cool up to warm now. So I think those three are all pretty terrible. But Sean Larry, we're in his top 10. He was a top 25 player at Memphis. And Crooks didn't like our in-home. So we're going to move over to Sean Larry now. Let's see if we can unlock some more of his pitch areas. I still cannot believe we got that center. That's ridiculous. That's a center that you get excited about, you know, if you're, if you're Duke or North Carolina or something like that. He's coming to Tulane. That's nuts. All right, so we've got... Sean Larry unlocked. Let's see what works out best for us pitch wise. He's really big into location and then playing time and academics. So let's just go ahead and talk about location. I mean, we're in this region, that'll work. We don't forget to offer the scholarship. I was looking like, why do I have a scholarship available still? And that was the reason. Never forget to offer scholarships to players that you would like to commit to your school. That's my number one tip. Right, let's bounce back over to all positions. Let's see, Holmes gets the location pitch. Harris, number one on Harris's list. That's cool. He's also definitely going to get a location pitch. And whew, where should our last visit go? You know what? Fanning was really good. He didn't like his on-campus visit. But let's go talk to him a minute about playing time and then see if we can kindle a spark. You know what I mean? Whew. Going into Cameron Indoor this year. The Duke Blue Devils on the road. That'll be a heck of a game for their fans to enjoy. <laughs> uh, the rest of it is pretty doable, though. We got a, a decent amount of home games, so that's also uh, definitely a good thing. All right, let's take a look. All right, guys, we're getting good news here. I saw something. I don't know if y'all caught it or not, but we got two decisions, and we still have no scholarships available. So Calvin Harris and Marquette Holmes are both coming in. This is ridiculous. I don't know who just joined the stream, but I hope it's Chris, because he needs to see this. All right, Fanning didn't care for our visit. Harrison Holmes, we got. So now Sean Larry is our last outstanding target. This is a, another monster class. Guys, I told you we could completely strike out, and I was aware of that possibility. This is the exact opposite of striking out. So the first year, we did well. This year, we're blowing the roof off. So we got four visits here to make. I'm pretty sure Larry wants to hear about location. We're up to second on his list. This is absurd, guys. Tulane is going to be like perennial top 25 real soon. I'm going to go ahead and just visit all four of these small forwards. I would really like to get a small forward, and it might as well be one of these guys. Let's see if any of them have changed their mind and want to come in for a visit. No. All right, let's move on ahead one more week. And then we've got one more week of in-home visits if we don't get a decision here in our favor. I think, though, I think this will be our last commitment. Watch. Bring it home, Sean Larry. It's got to roll over to uh, the new month. Why? Takes it a second here on this uh, progression. So here it is. Can we get our last commitment? Yes. Yeah, we got a monster class coming in. Tulane Green Wave. I, I, that's the best I can do for this animation. Look at this recruiting class. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable. So the Tulane Green Wave just pulled in. The number three center in the nation, five-star B.B. Higgins, 21st overall in the nation. Two four-star guys, both in the top 50. 
Marquette Holmes and Calvin Harris. They are both guards. We really only needed one guard. We got an extra one. Somebody can slide over. And then we pulled in Sean Larry, who did well at the Memphis camp. He's a three-star guy, just outside the top 150. But guys, when you're at Tulane and you pull four recruits and your worst one is 155th, that's an incredible season. Now, last last recruiting season, I told you uh, that I was guaranteeing it top 50. I was close, uh, very close. This one, this is going to be real close to the top 10. This is 100% a top 25 recruiting class, real close to top 10. So, guys, that is amazing. So, wow. I told you we were swinging for the fences. We got a really good class in last year that's going to serve as the base of this rebuild. By next year, the rebuild is over. And it's just going to be on, especially in conference. Like, we... Now, there's still good teams in this conference. We've still got Memphis. We've still got Cincinnati, Wichita State, University of Connecticut, Huskies. We've got good teams in this conference. So we're not, at, by any means, going to dominate this conference. But very quickly, we're going to be competing for this conference. And this kind of class... The last year's class is the kind that, that stabilizes you, that gives you that consistency. When I was talking uh, last night in the, the last stream about you, know, you can't give away games you're supposed to win, you can't be this inconsistent, the last class is the type of class that can get rid of that inconsistency. This is the kind of class that can push you up a notch, uh, that can you go and win games you're not supposed to win now. Uh, so, man, I could not be more excited. Higgins, obviously, is the crown jewel of the class. But Holmes and Harris are not that far behind. You know, Higgins being the MVP of a camp, I've got all the expectations in the world for him. Uh, but Harris was top 10 at Memphis. That's pretty good. And I don't remember Holmes. Holmes, he was top 5 at Memphis. So we got an MVP, a top 5, a top 10, and I believe Larry was top 25. That's all good, folks. Man, three in region, one out of region. We did grab Higgins, the, the crown jewel there, we'll call him, uh, out of Texas. So we'll move forward. This should get us into early November. Now, also what's happened at this point is throughout the recruiting, you know, throughout this last month of practice, our coaches have got better evaluations on the players. So I started off the stream by sort of introducing you to the freshmen showing you where the ratings were and, and how I thought those would change. They should have changed by now, so let's go take a look and see if that's actually happened. Or We can see uh, the rankings have changed here a little bit. So Higgins has moved up a bit. Harris is right, borderline top 50. Larry took took quite a dive, but their, their camp performance is still the same. Their high school stats are still the same. Uh, this is a, an unbelievable recruiting class. That number will change again before the end of this season. I'm not worried about that in the slightest bit. Let's take a look here at our evaluations on our current team. So you can see actually they have not changed. Wadeau, Malone, both still one and a half steps and still four. So maybe the change is earlier than I was thinking. Maybe this was the updated numbers. Uh, but it looks like this is what we've got. So let's take a look. I always like to jump over and uh, see what the computer would do with this roster and a lot of times you'll find the, the computer does not make terrible choices uh, sometimes you won't understand it I, i'll move it around from time to time uh, if i've got guys that i know they want a lot of playing time and i don't want to upset them uh, sometimes i'll make some changes then um if i've got poor scout now i do think that the ai makes these decisions based on the scouts that you have so if i've got poor scouts if i've got a highly rated guy and my scouts are saying some walk-on is better than this highly rated guy that I recruited. Sometimes I'll make that flip, but let's see what the AI says here. So they like Stetson starting. Look at that. They like Wado, Even though he's the one-and-a-half star, they've still got him in the starting lineup. I totally trust that decision. They got Boyce, they got Lusick, and they got Lucius. Now, Kerry scored a ton for us last year, didn't he? Am I thinking of somebody else? Must be thinking of somebody else. He was scoring seven points a game. What about... He was getting four assists a game. Uh, but I really like Stetson. So, you know, Kerry, 
same time with brown. Now see, I do want to move Malone up. Because I, I do just, I trust my recruiting better than I trust our wretched scouts. So I'll let the computer do the matrix from here. Why did it, okay. Is, can Goodwin not play power forward? If we have him higher on the list, oh, because he's going sliding all the way down and playing small forward because we're so short on small forwards. Interesting. Because look, all we got up here is point guards and centers. We don't even have a power forward uh, outside of Ladeau. We don't have a sh another shooting guard. It's all point guards and centers. So quite the interesting roster that we've got going on here. But it's set one way or the other. We can take one last look at our strategy. We're going 50-50 motion triangle. Running heavy in man, and then we're running a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court. We can take a look here at our at our practice breakdown. You can see it has 100% practice time remaining. Why, does, why did that reset? That might have screwed us in the preseason, but we'll fix it now. I can't remember how much full court I'm actually running. What is this? Why does the save changes? What is going on here? Why is this being weird? It's not giving us any of that screen. Um, take one more look at it. It said it save changes, and it definitely did not. But now other stuff's moving. Let's try this again. Now it looks like it's working out. Tens all through there. Twenty there. Five. Five. And then we can go 20 and 20. Save that. Cool. One last time to make sure it's stuck. And then we are set up to go for our regular season. If this didn't stick, I might have to play around with it. But it did stick. No problems. Check our inbox real quick. All right, so we got some incidents here. Made some jokes. Steven Reigns took a hard foul, shoved him back. So let's make the calls right now while I'm thinking about it. Blue sick man, you gotta ease up. Yeah, there's something to worry about. But I am gonna be a uh, chicken and not suspend him because that's the only small forward we've got. Who was it? Boyce was involved in two of those. Now he seemed to be uh, maybe the victim in both of them. But he's going to turn it around. And then who was our third player? One of my kids is trying to sneak down here. I'm glad we're about to wrap up. Lucic and Steven Reigns. So let's give Reigns a call, see if he'll fess up. He'll try harder. Wonderful. So, guys, that's the stream. That's our recruiting. Uh, we absolutely crushed it. I cannot wait to get you this season, but after that recruiting session, I can't wait to bring you guys next season. So I'm trying to push forward with this Tulane save. Hopefully the life doesn't get in the way. We can get back to streaming. I don't know if we'll get it over this weekend, but definitely get it in the next week. Uh, we'll try to get a couple of streams up, get you through this 2026 season and see where we go from there. So I appreciate you guys watching. You know, reach out if you got questions, comments, any of that stuff. Uh, but thank you all for stopping by and I'll catch you next time.